We have no clue where we're going right now. I've never been here, so I think it's time for a quick swim. Maybe eat a little lunch. And we're going fishing. There's a huge fish right there. Right there. That thing is over 24 inches long. Guys, I got one. I got one. Well, hello world and welcome back to another addictive fishing video. Today, we are far away from home in a golden place called beautiful Colorado. We're hiking six miles into this lake right now to check out some of the fishing and experience what this place is all about. I'm already blown away. This is only my second or third time in Colorado, but my first trip that I actually got to go out and go on adventures like this. So I got me, we got the special lady friend, and we got the tiny boy. And we're hiking into the back country. She'll so catch us some fish. Come along, it's gonna be an awesome adventure. So first tutorial of the day, one thing that I hate seeing is something like this. I could smell this thing from like a quarter mile down the trail. Someone is a total stink ass, but I hate seeing that. There's bathrooms all over the place and if you are going to take the chance and mother nature is calling and you need to just let loose out here in mother nature, don't do it on the side of the trail everybody. This is already one of the most beautiful places that I've ever been. Colorado is an incredible state. I did another video as I was on this trip for Stay Fishy. If you guys don't know what Stay Fishy is, it's Stay Fishy Adventures, it's my other YouTube channel. It's just me and Little, and adventures just like this. But I hate seeing people desecrate trails like this, it's just disgusting, so there's trees over there. Trees over there. Things to hide behind. Don't poop on the trail, people. Don't be a NARP. It stands for non-athletic regular person. Don't be that person. Yeah, everybody, I'm wearing pink shoes. You know it. Saw it here first, pink shoes. They were a gift, so don't worry. I'm not turning on you guys. There's nothing wrong with that. But I like pink shoes. These things are pretty nice. <sighs> okay. Whew, sweating my ass off. We're about halfway up the hike. And look at this view. Not a soul around. So tour guide Winnie says the lake is right up there at that peak. You can see it just left of her, right over there. That's it, the lake starts at the base of that. So we're about halfway. It looks like it's starting to level out. It's a pretty gnarly switchback, back and forth up the hill. Shouldn't have worn a black shirt, even though the limited dish, 4th of July, Tink top is the best. Thank you, Marlon. But just about halfway, guys. Looks like the scenery is about to change a little bit too, so this will be cool. All right, well, we finally made it into a different terrain. We made it out of the, those lowland aspens, and we're up in like this high spruce forest. Looks like some pines. Totally different feel, a lot cooler. Instantly just felt the temperature change as we got into the forest here, so this is one more sign that we're getting a little closer. But we're gonna start keeping our eye out for mushrooms. I've already seen a few. There's a dead one right here. But there's a good chance we might find some more chanterelles. We actually found some chanterelles on the Stay Fishy video I was just talking about. So go over to that channel, Stay Fishy Adventures, and watch that episode. Really cool, similar to this, but even better. Well, actually, who knows? We have no clue where we're going right now. I've never been here, so hopefully we'll find some mushrooms too. What's that? Nope. Dehydrated. I feel like there should be a six point bowl standing right up there. You going at me. Another meadow. Probably my favorite part of this so far. This high alpine meadows are pretty neat. Like I said, this is like the most perfect, beautiful elk country I've ever been in. We haven't seen any yet, but I know for a fact I'm gonna be talking Mr. Marlin into coming back to Colorado to go elk hunting. It is really cool here. The scenery is unreal and it's Every different canyon you turn and go up seems to be a little bit different, so I'm digging it. Digging it like a garden. Wow. Well, things have changed yet again. Look at this. Absolutely amazing. 
So just spotted the outlet of the lake. You can see where it comes out when it's overflowing in the spring. You guys can only imagine how much snow there is here in the winter. Again, especially at, we got to be at 12,000 feet by now, maybe even higher. I'm definitely feeling it. That, that elevation is higher than even some of the tallest mountains around where I live in the Northwest. I think Mount Rainier might be 17,000 feet. And that's about as high as any ridge gets or mountaintop in Oregon and Washington. So to just be starting at like 9,000, which is basically higher than anything I can hike. It's pretty wild. You can definitely feel it. This feels like lake. This looks like lake. This is lake. Is this lake? It's lake. <laughs> yes. We made it. Look at this place. Woo! Lonely. I think it's time for a quick swim. Maybe eat a little lunch. Then we're going fishing. Got a panther martin on there but this water is super clear I, then it's deep on this side when i just dove in i obviously wasn't anywhere near bottom and it's super deep and blue um and so i'm thinking for that deep water i'm gonna go with a cast master but i already got the old faithful panther martin on so i'm just gonna do it i don't even care i'm just doing it let her sink down there don't really know how deep it is but i'm guessing it's at least 20 feet out there if not more I'm just gonna start working our way counterclockwise around the lake Nevertheless, what an incredible spot to be fishing. You said you saw one though right there. Oh. <laughs> World's longest cast. <laughs> well, my knot got hung up on my my eyelet there and sent the world's longest cast out there into the water. So uh I guess now we switch to the cast master, eh? So to the cast master now, now that uh, poor old Panther Martin somewhere out there in the middle of the lake, probably got eaten on the way down because it's such a good lure. But I chose a red and gold cast master here because I'm guessing if there are these brook trout, they are like a super red and goldish color. So they're gonna help, this will look like a little mini wounded one. And it might be the kind of the only thing they have to eat in here other than natural bugs. I brought the fly rod and flies as well, but the thing about it is, can't really cast here. I'm not going to sit here and pull my flies out of trees all day. So we're sticking with the, the spinning rod until we go to that other side. If we see some fish swimming around, we'll switch to the fly rod because it would be really cool to catch something on the fly rod up here. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. One more cast and we're going to change spots. Okay, continuing in the loop. The only fish I've seen jump so far was right out in here. So we're gonna keep making our way around. The nice part about going up this other side here is gonna be that we'll be able to stand up high on the rocks and really get a visual and see if the fish are hunting or like what depth they're at. Obviously there's some over here towards the outlet and the shallow stuff. So a lot of times in these high mountain lakes like this, I find that, that the flies actually work quite a bit better than any sort of lure presentation just because it's what they're already keyed in on. So. So I'm gonna give her hell for a while with the lures, but until we can see the fish, I'm gonna just keep hunting with this stuff. Just mainly because I can cast so far with the cast master, cover so much water. And I'm pretty sure I've caught brook trout and cutthroat trout before plenty of times on on um, on the cast master in particular. Sorry, I had a brain fart there. <laughs> I wonder if there's gold in the bottom of this lake. There's gotta be. I'm really surprised we haven't seen much action yet. 
but you can see so far across this lake i wouldn't imagine that the fish are only going to be in one particular little area they should just be hunting around the banks and looking for food but i have only seen one jump and it looked like actually a really nice fish so a lot of times that's what having few fish will mean is that they're all bigger because they're all they're the only things in the lake getting all the food but we got about another half of the lake to ground um and it is really nice rocky shelf there might be a lot more bugs and crawdads or something else that might be in here hatching coming off this rock shelf so i'm not going to give up till we got one on the line Well, no fish yet. I think it's time for a little luncheon. And what a spot to eat some food. Let's do it. Lunch rock. Lunch rock. All right, everybody. On the menu today, we got cutting board. Number one. Got some trail mix. Got some canned fish. We got some wasabi nuts. The can's almost blowing up because we're so high in elevation. Oh, we can't forget our avocado. Somewhere in here is cheese. Oh yeah, good idea. And we got some sweaty cheese, everyone. Yeah. That's all right, it'll still taste good. Wasabi soy. Mm, yum. Protein. Mmm. Gosh, that's good. Look at that. Beautiful canned salmon. Okay, lunch is over. Cracked the cold beer, but it's about time to get back to the fishing. The witching hour is upon us. While cooling down our cheese, we noticed there's <coughs> a lot of aquatic life. Tons of bugs down in here, so I'm actually gonna switch to the fly rod for the next couple minutes, especially since I'm on this side that I can actually cast, because uh, I think the bugs are gonna work better. So let's grab the fly rod, bring the normal rod. We've got the box of flies. Let's go check it out. Feeling it, everyone. Feels good. Feels real good. Okay, fresh leader, fresh fly. They're rolling all around us now, you guys. And I'm not joking. I don't want to jinx myself, but they sound like pretty big fish. Every single take I'm hearing or seeing is a big splash. Nevertheless, look at this freaking view. God. Lucky day. It is our lucky day. We just got to put a fish on the bank and it will be perfect. This is what we're going with. Chartreuse head mini bugger. Really cool little fly. This is what I caught fish on on the last lake up here. Actually, in, in one of the streams that we fished. So, if we don't find a fish here tonight, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. We'll go out in the morning and try to get you another one. But I really want to get one up in this high lake. I know they're here. And I know they're going to be cool looking. Oh, neat. Just ruined my fly. Stupid big fingers. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back again. It's the next day. We're in a completely different area, and our quest continues to catch a Colorado trout. Yesterday was a very memorable day, going up to that lake and hiking that far into an area. Fish or not, really was a cool experience, and I wanna see your guys' comments below and what you thought of that. I cannot wait to come back to Colorado. I've already asked you guys through this video already what you thought about it so far, but I know this has been a really fun trip for me, and I can't wait to come back to this incredible place, so. Big thanks to the state of Colorado and all the people around here that keep these places so beautiful and pristine, but it's 
speaking of beautiful and pristine, look at this. This is pretty cool. We're right below the base of a really big dam. And uh, this is a tailwater stream. So this, this water is coming straight out of the bottom of the dam, which is kind of why it shows this. Yesterday we hiked into a high mountain lake um, and obviously it had plenty of water in it, but now that we're in these river sections like this in these areas like, like we're seeing here, it's gonna be a little bit harder to find areas that have a lot of water unless it's coming out of a tailwater situation like a dam like this. So let's get our rod ready. I'm gonna go with the old Panther Martin. I think I might need to go a little smaller. I'm not sure even what kind of fish are. I know it's legal to fish here, but I don't know what kind of fish there are here, but let's give it a first cast. Okay. Nothing. It does look fishy though. I'm pretty sure I can see one even. Now I know spinner fishing is legal here, but I'm guessing a lot of these folks around here probably fly fish. So I'm probably having a pretty good fighting chance of hooking a fish here using these spinners like this because it does not seem like it's the most popular method, which is nice. Makes it a little easier on us, on us tourists like myself. But nothing hitting here. I'm gonna start working my way up river. Looks like some really, really good water up ahead of us here. So let's go see if we can find this fish. This looks fishy. This looks extremely fishy, everyone. Come on, give us a Colorado trout. A really would like a Colorado trap. Oh, oh God, I just got freaking hammered, you guys. I know you probably saw that in the rod tip. Oh man, that got heavy too. Son of a, pardon my language, you guys, but that felt like a good fish. Son of a gun. What a cool area too. Looks like a perfect little spot for a brown trout to sit. Stalking its prey. Oh my God, I just got hit again. Okay, I'm gonna do one more cast with this little lure. And this is the number six Panther Martin that I have on. And I'm guessing, I know there's gotta be some big brown trout in here just given the area that we're in. Oh my God, there he was again. Son of a you Guys, I'm getting hit. But like I was just saying, I think I might have to switch to a little bit smaller lure. Or sometimes just a quick little change up will get these things to bite. So let's do that. I got my smaller number six or number four Panther Martin right here. A little bit smaller, different color. Let's see if it'll work. Okay, here it goes. Number four. Just got hit again. Must be some littler fish. Oh my God, I see a giant brown. Excuse my language, you guys. There's a 24 inch fish right here in front of me. Oh, he just moved away from my spinner. I don't know if you can see that, you guys, but it's huge, absolutely massive. Oh my God. Oh my God, he swiped at it. Okay, I'm gonna switch lures. I don't know if you guys can see that right there that thing is over 24 inches long oh my god i was not what i was expecting to find in here i'm going to switch over to this maps this is more like a, a fish looking lure it's got like a rainbowish looking pattern on the on the blade holy crap i have got to catch that thing okay he's still there we've got a different lure on come on untangle rod Oh, I'm so freaking blown away by how big that fish is right now. This might be, this would be one of the biggest rounds I've ever caught fishing like this. I caught a really nice one in um, Wisconsin with a friend of ours on a video a while back. Okay, here we go. Oh my God, he's chasing it. Oh my God. You guys, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this fish right here. Oh my God, he chased it all the way to the bank. Oh my God, I don't know if you guys saw that. He really wants this thing, you guys. He went right down here into the tail out. Oh my God, where did he go? 
my heart's pounding everyone my heart is pounding please everyone watching cross your fingers right now i really want to catch this fish this thing is a massive brown oh my gosh freaking bait okay well it's a fish no less that switch up to the meps too really did it just switching the lure i'm pretty sure that fish the first couple of fish that i was like the couple of hits that i got i think that's exactly what it was and that's why that fish all of a sudden showed up in front of me he probably followed that lure all the way in i gotta find him again i don't know where the heck he went i'm gonna get up on this little vantage point here see if i can find him oh where did he go he turned and whipped and went down river He's right in here somewhere, he's hiding. He must've went a little bit deeper. I really don't think he switched pools. I don't see why he would've left this pool, but we're gonna check just in case. He might've slipped right down into here. We're gonna find out. I think I see another big one right there. The thing about these browns is they are very predatory fish. They're like velociraptors of the trout species and they just kill stuff. A lot of their diet is other smaller fish like that one I just lost. So I think that's why switching to that rainbow trout looking lure, that MEPS probably acquired that bite and made that thing chase it down like that. Cause it's kind of resembling exactly what these things are gonna be chasing and eating. Oh God, that was, HBC, HBC everybody, Heartbreak City. Okay, we're gonna have to change holes. This has been a long, hard fought adventure to catch a Colorado trout on this episode. I hope you guys are digging it. It's been pretty fun for me, but let's go try the next hole up, give this one a little hole rest, and we're gonna come back to it though, because this fish, he's not gonna leave. Okay, I'm gonna kinda sneak up on this one. Not gonna get too close. Don't wanna spook anything that might be in there. Oh my god, there he was. Son of a gun. That wasn't a giant one, but it was a trout. First cast. Man, I got a good feeling about this, you guys. I have a feeling we're going to tie into a really good one here. Better stick around. After seeing that last fish, I have no clue really what to expect in here. That thing was absolutely... Oh, just missed another one. Man, these things are not holding on to it well. Biting very finicky. But we figured out what they want. This this MEPS is definitely the lure. One thing I will say is I have a pretty cool and unique advantage here today with the river being so low, especially being a place that I've never been before. Being able to go into an area and fish where basically the water is so low and all these fish are so condensed into these little spots is very, very helpful when fishing in a new area that you've never been to before. Okay. Missed our chance there. On to the next spot. Man. You know, brown's like wood. Right over there by that wood. Now this is just absolutely beautiful water here. There's got to be a fish. You guys can tell how I'm kind of working this whole section downriver to up. And the reason for that is, especially with a predatory fish like this or any trout that are, they're staring up river. All their feed, anything that's helping them survive is coming from in front of them, uh, obviously, and flowing straight down river. So the best, oh my God, that was a really big one. Just chasing to the bank. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my God, you guys. Oh, another at least. 16, 18 incher just chased me down all the way to the bank. I could see him. Oh, no. Come on. There's no shortage of fish in here. That's for damn sure. I just got to get one to stick on the line. Oh, okay. The search continues, you guys. This has been probably the most exciting part of the trip so far. I'm gonna head to the top of this little island because the river had split on the other side there. 
So I'm gonna head kind of up to the top of this island, keep working all these little pockets. And I'm sure there's gonna be another deep pocket above where this island starts, so where the water kind of slows up, but we've got a lot of really good water right here in front of us, so let's keep it going. Okay, just lost one while the camera was off, naturally. Oh my God, I see a giant. He's right under this log. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can see just the end of his tail. He's got his nose stuck under here. Oh my God, that thing is huge. That thing is absolutely massive. Please, Lord. Oh, I just had him. Oh my God, I just had him. Oh my God, you guys, why is this so hard? Why is the creator making this so hard on me right now? My camera's overheating, so Lord knows, as soon as I actually hook this thing, that I'm gonna lose you guys, and we're not even gonna get it on camera. Oh my God, that thing was huge. Oh, this is driving me nuts. Damn it. Okay, we're back to hog on a log. Sadly enough, the camera was off and I just got smacked one more time. I broke off the maps. Maps is gone, so beans. No more maps. But I'm gonna work my way back down river and we are still in search of our first brown. So I'm gonna fish the next few holes down. Might keep the camera off just to make sure I, I keep enough battery to get the fish on film if I do hook it. I'm gonna go back down to Hog Johnson there where, where we first started and see if we can get him. But I'm gonna work my way down. Wish me luck, everyone. Well, just went by a fellow angler and he had on a giant. And these aren't browns, you guys. These are cutthroat. These are like West Slope, Lahotan cutthroat. Absolutely beautiful. West Slope or Lahotan. I'm not sure which of the two. Beautiful, beautiful fish nonetheless. He just released it just up river and he said he got it on a red San Juan worm. And we are in worm country, so I'm gonna go back to the truck. I'm gonna grab my bobber and I have some micro worms, some addicted micro worms, and I'm gonna see if they'll work. Let's get it. Okay, back at the car. And then I'm gonna go with a little red haze worm. Let's see if it works. So a super neat little discovery on the way down here. We got a prickly pear cactus. Something I am most definitely not used to. Pretty freaking cool. Good thing I'm wearing my Chacos. That's not gonna feel good. That is not gonna feel good at all. But I'm gonna start working my way down the river. I got the, the San I got the San Juan addicted worm on, we'll call it. I'm gonna start working down looking for some other pools. There's a couple of anglers up here in these holes up above, but hopefully this is a really good little tip that we just got from this other dude. And uh, we're gonna change the game. So we might go back and fish the same holes that we've already fished because we did see those big fish in them. Um, and then we're gonna work our way down river here first and then go back up. So look, anyways, cool prickly pear cactus. Watch your toes. Oh, this looks like a damn good spot coming up here. We've got this little waterfall section. Nice deep little slot next to it. Let's see if we can put our worm to work here, everyone. The moment of truth. Guys, I got one. I got one. I flipped the spinner over. Just changed it to PM. I thought it was bottom. After all this, I thought it was bottom. And look at the size of this freaking thing. Oh my God, we did it. We did it. Oh, this is a brown. This is a big brown. Oh man, and these browns are my arch nemesis in life. And I got him. I got him, everybody. Look at this fish. Look at him. Oh, it's so beautiful. I'm gonna get him back in the water really quick. Oh, that thing's gotta be at least 20 inches. Look at it! I did it! <laughs> I did it! Oh yeah, baby. Let's take a pretty look. Wow. What a cool fish. Big thanks to Colorado. Another check off the list. And there she goes. Beautiful brown on the bank. In the books, we did it. Thanks for sticking around, everybody. Oh, what an accomplishment and what a way for it to go, too. <laughs> I turned the camera off just again to save battery and stuff. I'm hiking down the river quite a ways here. Thing hit the water, barely moved an inch with the Panther Martin. 
Bam, fish on. Whew, we did it. Okay, I made my way back down. One more little pocket here. Very similar water to where I just caught that fish. Very broken, very bubbly. A lot of oxygen, a lot of moving parts. Just getting over in here. Oh, got smacked the whole way across there. Something wanted me. Something wanted me. Oh, I had him. Oh, son of a gun. There's an aggressive little bastard right here. Okay, in goes the worm. Enough messing around. Worm time. It's the term for the worm. Oh! That was a bite. Oh, damn it. Oh, that was a good one. Damn it. Right in the foam. The foam was home. Got absolutely drained. Son of a gun. Oh, that was the one too. There felt like some pretty good weight behind that thing. Damn it. At. This is time to move down. Okay, it's some really nice structure over here. Got a lot of wood, a lot of rocks, but it's pretty shallow. But I still, I think just fishing this stuff, other people have it. So there is actually quite a few anglers out here today, this afternoon. But I noticed, as you guys did, I, I snuck into that really kind of peculiar spot there. Um, where I got that last fish, somewhere I don't think a lot of people have taken the effort to get out to. So, fishing some of this weird stuff that people may not be able to fish quite as effectively might get me another one. It just might work. Might be crazy enough to work, at least. Oh my god, I think I just saw a giant on the inside here. Cast a little bit closer. Oh, lost him. Just a little guy though. Just a little guy. Okay. That was just a little guy. It's okay though. I have a really good feeling about this next little section we're coming down into here, everybody. Oh, there he was again. Felt kind of like a small one though. But this little section down below us here just looks absolutely great easy. Oh, the hell was that? I feel like I've gotten grabbed twice in here. Okay, time to go back to the worm. I like this method too. I'm just going worm spinner, worm spinner, worm spinner at every little spot. Kind of picking apart all these rocks and who knows what we're going to find in between. I have a good feeling about it though. It's a very effective way to fish. Okay, got a really big deep pool here. I have a good feeling about this. Start my cast down here a little bit so I have a little current. I know there's gotta be a giant in here. Oh, really good bite. Come on, come back for it. Oh my God, he took it again. He's messing with me, ladies and gentlemen. Good little twiddle. Dang it. Oh, okay. Try that again. This might be my spot. I might have found my spot, everyone. This is my hole. I can feel it. Well, everybody, 
made it back to Washington in one piece. I gotta say, this is one of the coolest trips I've been on in a long time. And I really wanna know your guys' feedback on what you thought of the sights, scenery, and the fishing that we saw in Colorado on this adventure. I have to say, it's one of the coolest places I've ever been, and one place that I wanna go back more than anywhere now and spend some more time fishing. So if we get some support for you guys, for those of you who live out in that area and you wanna hang out, you wanna fish, you wanna go have some adventures, hit us up here on the page and we'll head back down there and have some fun. I wanna give a huge thanks to all of you for watching this video. I had a blast making it and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you wanna see more fun videos just like you saw here today, go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on, give this video a thumbs up and comment below and you can be the comment of the day just like this guy right here. Thanks so much for watching, addicts. You all stay fishy, we'll see you out there.